ACM, which is the Association for Computing and Machinery, which is also the uh, association that hands out the prestigious uh, Turing Awards. And this is the Asia CCS, which is the Computer and Communication Security uh, Forum. And with me today, I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Professor Hu Hongxing with the uh, University at Buffalo, all the way from the United States. Uh, so, Professor will be sharing with us on this uh, cyber threats from IoT devices and obviously a lot of us have IoT devices but uh, there's an extra complication when it comes to voice control IoT devices and some of the cyber threats uh, we may be familiar with are some of the hardware problems uh, and software problems but with voice there's an additional complexity to it and I think we heard of some uh, you know dolphin attacks and things like that so can you just tell us you know how what are kind of the uh, common cyber threats facing voice control IoT devices yeah so Amazon has a Alexa system. That's right. Google has a Google Assistant system. So, so for example, you can ask Alexa open a door. Okay, and the system can just open the door directly. That's right. So, the attacker they can also design some malicious skills, just like uh, your Android apps developed by by users. Even those users may have malicious users. The same thing for Alexa system, Google Assistant system. A hacker, they can develop malicious skills. They can upload mm -hmm. those skills to skill store. Mm -hmm. So if the user, unfortunately, they can they download okay those malicious skill, enable the skill in the Alexa system. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, the the one skill that you talked about uh, quite a lot at your presentation is um, uh, Alexa open the door. Open the door. You're right. Right and. Three attack scenarios that right, you, right, right. You, you talked about. Can you tell us what are the three attacks? Yeah, the first attack, just ask Alexa, open the door. The attacker can create open the door skill and use the same lame. But it's actually not opening the door. Not open the door. It so could be locking the door. Yeah, the lame of the skill, just like open the door. So the Alexa system just say, oh, this, no, this, this, uh, this skill should have a high priority. Ah, oh, right. Misleading so, label. Yeah, misleading, yeah, right, right, right. Officially, it should be open the door, but uh, they just uh, close the, the door, lock the door, even they do nothing. This is one kind of attack. Another attack, actually, actually they also they can utilize something called Q and uh, A. So the question and answer, the question skill. Question and answer The skill, skill yeah. yeah, right. There are some skills they can answer questions. But uh, for this kind of Q and A skill, can be also used by, by attacker. They can design, maybe you can say, Alasa, open the door. But actually, in the... The skill did the last thing. Right. Okay. So how is that different from the first one, which is the, also the major difference is the Q and the E actually answer questions. Ah, uh, like how's the weather? Yeah. Right. Example. Right. 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 But uh, this this kind of skill has high priority. Oh, so uh, right. So attacker can sort of categorize this under uh, the Q A Q and A Q &A category, which yeah. has a high priority. High priority. Then smart oh, right. Yeah, I right. see. I see. Actually, this this can easily okay, bypass the system. The last thing is a denial service attack. Oh, yeah, yeah could, could, could also, yes, yeah, it could be a denial of service. Yeah, service that's, yeah. that's right, that's right. So user want to open the door, but the system get, does nothing. We discuss in, the, in our papers, we can achieve 100% successful rate. So that means the, for this kind of skill, we can easily bypass the system, enable the system to do, do nothing, even do some malicious behaviors for a smart home. <laughs> and what is the third uh, scenario? The third attack is just like we just uh, enable intern. For example, if we ask her to open the door, this is the intern that you want to open the door. So this kind of intent also can be uh, manipulated by attackers. When they can inject malicious code, okay, into a skill, and uh, right, even yeah. they can do, can do anything. The user can yeah. customize. Customize skill. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So if you have a, a voice control IoT device and right. you have a, uh, say, a flatmate that is, you know, not quite getting along with you, right, uh, right. they can potentially potentially do last do, do other the, things. Uh, can I just go back to the third attack? How is mm. that? So that's overwriting the original intent. That's right, 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 right. How is that different from the first one, which is also... The first one, actually, we just change the name. Oh, yes, yeah, of right, course, right. yes, that's right, of course. That's yeah, easy. The first yeah. One, yeah, that's right, of course, yeah. But, uh, but the third one is a little bit different. It's more, more complicated, so you have to manipulate the intention. You have to create a, maybe a couple of intentions. Mm. So we found, actually, if we increase the number of intentions, normally, so this kind of skill get a high priority. Right, right, okay. <laughs> so basically the ranking is really um, anyone can do it. Right, but obviously you say that Alexa has uh, taken steps to... Yeah, take a step to, to do something. To correct something. Yeah, yeah correct something. Yeah, right, right. Okay. So, so, so this is something yeah, we, we, we report in our paper. So. Right, okay. So uh, what about other voice control systems? How vulnerable are they? Yeah, Any we, ideas? Yeah, actually, so we, even for Google system, we utilize different ranking system. Mm. So, but... Uh, 
yeah, we yeah, this is our future work. We want to also want to test the Google's Google Assistant uh, platform. So this sounds like uh, it's uh, something that's easier to exploit than say uh, the um, some of these uh, dolphin attacks that people are talking about. Yeah, dolphin attack, right? Mm. Right, which mm. is obviously using some frequency mm. that yeah. humans cannot hear, but yeah. you inject that kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, audio. Uh, patterns into it, but those require more sophisticated skill set to uh, exploit. So dolphin attack, we can inject some maybe some special maybe signal into the into words and uh, manipulate the system to do something even enforce maybe malicious behaviors for for some IoT devices. But for our our attack, you can see even we don't need to do this kind of dolphin attack. We just directly okay design the exactly. skill and we can enable the Alexa system to to enforce, enforce some malicious skill. Okay, so the question I have to ask is, mm. why why would the threat actors do something like that? Um, so it's not for money, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, yeah. to, it's basically to disrupt the service. Uh, so this depends. Okay, sometimes, uh, as I mentioned, so if a target can inject malicious code into the system, Actually, they can do anything. Oh, they can do <laughs> lateral movement across devices that's connected in at home, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. For example, they can do yeah because they can do anything. So even they can they can track your location. So actually, if you in our paper, we have we have, we have tested our our attack even against some skill we call car skill. So cars, that's the cars also is an IoT device. Of course, device. yeah, vehicles. So yeah. So they can user they can use the words to control the car for example, open the oh, open cars the door. will be yeah, dangerous. Open, okay, yeah, okay, dangerous. Open door. Even they can, we can ask ask the baby skill to track the user your location. So there's some privacy issue. Even sometimes they can even uh, turn off the, your engine. It's very oh, yeah, dangerous. Of course, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. Right, okay. So um, for, for users, uh, say uh, with a car, I guess you can kind of tell when it becomes road, right? right but right. that's only after the fact. But say for a, say a speaker system at home, how mm -hmm. can you tell that it's you know, um, malicious, it's performing uh, uh, actions that is unintended? That's only after the fact you discover it, right? Like you, know, you ask it to sh shut the door, but it doesn't. Then that's you realize true. it's malfunction. Yeah, so we have a system. We build a system, can test all the skills. Mm -hmm. We can find okay some malicious skills, mm -hmm. which we can even notify Amazon, ask them to even Amazon to remove okay those skills from the skill store. Right. So this uh, this one one potential solution yeah try to address this problem. Amazon system they also need to develop maybe this kind of system. So if developer release the skill. Amazon should use some system to monitor, to verify if there's any malicious behaviors, specific intent. Right, right. Yeah, no, Amazon should uh, remove those skills from the store. Yeah. The skill store, yeah. I think to some extent, Google Play Store tries to do that for the app system. Yeah, because, exactly for, for Android system. You can know, even Google, yeah, they have done something, even they have do the dynamic analysis, static analysis. Mm. They try to find malicious apps. So if you submit your apps, if they follow this malicious skill, then you cannot uh, pass no, get no verification. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, <laughs> but there's still loopholes that people uh, exploit, of course. Yeah, but yeah, but that's another day, another podcast. I think mm -hmm. yes. So you talked about uh, some of the detection systems that you have developed and that manufacturers should also uh, consider. Uh, final advice for users like myself who has you know some of these voice control IoT. What should we do for a user? It's really hard. So because yeah, for Android system, we know oh, we still have so many more well. Mm -hmm. We have malicious, malicious applications in the App Store. Even sometimes the user okay download those those apps. Then that means so even though we use those devices, we should pay attention. Yeah. So so I guess uh, at the moment what you're saying that is that uh, we still have to kind of like uh, defer to 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 the manufacturers or the OEMs. Uh, verification uh, protocols and there's not there's only so much we as users can do <laughs> but i guess uh, awareness is the first step so thank you so much uh, for you know uh, uh -huh. taking the time to share with us uh, some of these okay. uh, mm -hmm. research uh, findings and so that we can increase our awareness and at least pay attention that's yeah, the first okay. step thank you professor okay thank you <laughs>